In this video, we will show you how to install our ZPA add-on instruction into your RS Logic 5000 environment. What we will do is install the AOI for ZPA mode so it's available to use, add a convey links module to your Ethernet tree, place the AOI into your ladder program, map the AOI to the newly added convey links module, and write a rung in the ladder program to enable the module. Right click on the add-on instruction icon in the controller organizer and select import add-on instruction. From the dialog, browse to where you downloaded the file, select it, and click import. You can check to see that there are no errors and then click OK. When this is done, you will see the name of the AOI under the add-on instruction folder icon in the controller organizer. In order to actually use an AOI in a program, we first need to create an instance of a ConveyLinks module in the Ethernet tree. This procedure was covered in our previous video on how to install and use the ConveyLinks EDS file. The main difference here from that video is that the ZPA AOI is expecting the ZPA with reset protection selection for the module. You can verify that the module was created by checking the Ethernet tree in the controller organizer. Now we want to place an instance of the AOI onto a ladder rung. Once it is on a rung, we need to create a controller tag for the AOI. In our example, we will call this tag node underscore 20 and then create a new tag. As you can see from the dialog, the data type is the name of the AOI. Once we have the AOI's tag created, we need to assign a real convey links module to the AOI's inputs and outputs. Note that when you invoke the tag browser for the inputs, it automatically filters out only the available tags that match the data type for the AOI you are using. This data type is defined in the EDS file. You repeat the same process to select the proper tag for the outputs. As you recall, we created the module as ZPA with reset protection. So this means we need to add a rung to set a bit in the AOI to command the module to accept outputs from the PLC. If we do not do this, the module will ignore any data coming from the PLC. For this rung, we want to know that the module is connected, and we get this not from an AOI tag, but from the module's connection faulted tag. We then want to get an input from the AOI to know if the module is enabled. Then for our example, we are adding a bit for system OK to run, which is an optional tag for you to add other conditions that have to be true before you can enable the module. The coil for the run is the AOI bit that will command the module to be enabled. So the finished logic for this run is, if the module does not have a faulted connection and is not currently enabled, and the module is otherwise allowed to be enabled, then the AOI has issued the command to enable the module. Please note that this coil is not maintained and in the AOI acts as a one-shot because once the module is enabled, the normally closed module enable input will go off, thus de-energizing the coil. To get access to all of our instructional videos and to receive notifications for new videos, please subscribe below to our channel.